calculus physics. And so, well, yeah, but yeah, you'll see. Okay, here we go. Um, yes, this is being recorded. I can record now. Now that I got this computer from Mr. Hall. No, actually, I stole this computer out of the athletic department, but Mr. Hall fixed it for me. And so, yeah, here we go. All right, we're going to do derivatives and context, and then we're going to do position, velocity, acceleration, and work with rates of change. Okay, so the derivative of the function is the instantaneous rate of change of the function at a point on the function. It's slope still, you understand it's slope, but instead of a r rate of change over a long period, it's at a certain point, it's the instantaneous rate of change. How, what is changing at that point? That is the first derivative, which again is slope and so on. So we're gonna look at some problems and try to look at them and figure out what they're talking about, okay? And what the slope has to do with them, okay? So water is filling a pool, okay? And do you wanna hit that light, Dylan, so it's just easier to see. Water is filling the pool. The function W gives the pool water in meters after T minutes. What's the inter best interpretation for the following statement? The slope of the line tangent at W at T equals five is equal to 0.1, okay? Well, at T equals five, that's time five. So at five minutes, and if this is the derivative, because the slope of the tangent line is the derivative, that's what's going on, okay? And we're talking about water level after T minutes. So after five minutes is a, the pool is being filled at a rate of 0.1 meters per minute. The pool is being filled at a rate of 0.1 over 5 meters per minute. After 5 minutes, the water level is 0.1 meters. Or after 5 minutes, it's being filled at a rate of 0.01 meters or minutes per meter. Well, that doesn't make sense. And what happens is, well, after 5 minutes at time equals 5, this is the change. The slope is how it is changing. This is a constant. It's not a constant. It's how it's changing. Okay? So it would be that answer because that's talking about the change in meters per minute. Okay? The function gives the day length in minutes on the nth day in Juneau, Alaska. So... This says when x is 10 and x is the number of day, this is the length that is changing. The length that is changing because the first derivative of a function at a point is how much it's changing. So on January 10th, the day is increasing at a rate of three minutes per day. Or on January 10th, the day is three minutes long or it's increasing at a rate of three minute, three days per minute, or it's increasing at a rate of three minutes per day. It says until January 10th or on January 10th. So there's key words, until, no, this is January 10th, so it's on January 10th. It's a positive three, so it's increasing at a rate of three minutes per day. That's putting derivatives in the context of a sentence. Let's do one more. Maybe there's two more, one more, okay? The population of town T years after it was founded, okay? So the slope of the tangent line at T equals two is negative 10, okay? Negative 10 means that we're decreasing, okay? Time equals two is, in this case, two years, because we're talking about years. So after two years, the rate of change of the population decreased at a rate of 10 people per year. That sounds good. After two years, the town's population decreased at a rate of 10 people per year. And now how is that different than number one? 
the rate of change of population decreased at a rate of 10 people per year per year. <gasps> oh, per year per year. That's acceleration. We're talking about velocity of change. So that this one sounds better. Um, decreased at over the first two years. It's not over the first two years. It's at this time because it's an instantaneous rate of change. So it's not over two years. It's at the two-year point. Um, and it's not decreased at a rate of 10 people. It's 10 people per year. Okay? So you'll have some derivatives in context. Now, the next important stuff. Position is where you're located at a specific time. That's the original function, a position function. That would be like um, h of t equals 16t squared plus 32t um, plus 80, okay? Where this might be the position or your height would be your position, okay? So position is the original function where you're located at a specific time. Velocity is the change in distance or the change in your quantity divided by the change in time, okay? And most of the time, it's distance, but it could be a change of something else. So the change in distance divided by the change in time, okay? That's the first derivative of the position function. So you have position, and velocity is the first derivative of position. And acceleration is the change in the velocity divided by the change in time. It's how much the velocity is changing over time. So the acceleration is the first derivative of velocity, or it's the second derivative of position. So that's why we learned to take two derivatives last chapter, so we could come in here and figure out that, okay, if I want acceleration, I have to take the derivative and then the derivative again. Okay, so that's acceleration. Now, I struggled at this the first time I looked at these graphs to figure out what was going on. And then it takes a little bit of time to understand what when we get to the graphs here. So are we good with position, velocity, acceleration here? Yes. I'm going to move up. Okay. So here's a position versus time graph. Okay, if I'm home right here, and my positive, if I'm positive, I'm moving to the west. If I'm negative, I'm moving to the east. Okay, so my position, this is time. So after one minute, maybe, then I moved probably two miles to the west. After five minutes, I maybe move three miles to the west. And then what happens here? I'm moving forward to the west here. And then once I have a negative slope, I'm actually moving backwards. I'm still west of my house. But when I hit the x-axis, where am I at? You know, I'm back to my house or even with my house. And then, as I go to the east, I'm going towards the east until I get here. And then once I start going positive slope again, then where am I going? Going back to the west again. Okay, I'm going back to the west. So, I'm moving forward all along here. Then I'm moving backwards because I'm going back to the house again. I continue to move backwards from where I was headed originally, and then I move forward again. And that's what happens in a position versus time graph, whether I'm moving backwards or forwards. Okay? All right. Now we're going to look at a velocity versus time. Okay? Where velocity versus time is forwards versus backwards and speeding up versus slowing down, okay? So, my velocity 
Okay, let's look at the speeding up. As you increase your velocity, you're going faster. As you decrease your velocity, you're going slower. Okay, so I'm increasing my velocity and then my decreasing my velocity. And now here I have a negative velocity. How can I have a negative velocity? You're going backwards, okay? So, whenever a velocity versus time graph is positive, you're moving forwards. Whenever you're below, you're moving backwards, okay? Which is different because this is when you're sloping down, you're going backwards. When you're sloping up, you're going forwards on a position versus time. Velocity versus time, if you're above the x-axis, you're going forward. If you're below the x-axis, you're going backwards, okay? From here to here, I'm speeding up. Here, I'm slowing down. What am I doing from here to here? I'm actually speeding up. I'm getting more negative. I'm speeding up in a negative direction. So the further, as you get further from the x-axis, you're speeding up. As you get closer to the x-axis, you're slowing down. Because when you're on the x-axis, you're not moving. You're at zero velocity. And then I'm going negative two, negative three, negative four. So I'm going faster, but just going backwards. And then I start slowing down to zero again. Okay. So here you're slowing down. Okay. So are we good with those? So here's our cheat sheet right here. Okay. So here are my position. Since I'm going in a negative direction, since I'm going negative direction, I'm going backwards, 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 and then I stop. And once I go here, then now I start moving forwards, okay? So as I go this way, I'm moving backwards. As I'm going this way, I'm moving forwards. Here, okay, this is a velocity versus time graph, moving backwards or forwards. Here, my velocity is zero, I'm not moving. Here, since I'm below the x-axis, I'm moving backwards. Since I'm above the x-axis, I'm moving forwards. Since I'm below the x-axis, I'm moving backwards. Okay? And then, like, here, slowing down. Here, speeding up. Here, slowing down. Here, speeding up. Slowing down. Speeding up. Slowing down. So this one would be slowing down. What would this one and this one be? Um, so I'm speeding up and then slowing down. That would be my, this would be my maximum velocities right there. Okay. That would be as fast as I go. For an instant, you can't call it a constant, but that would be your maximum. So. Most of your speeding up and slowing down won't happen at your maximum points. They'll want to know what's going on in between. So I'm getting faster as I'm moving away. I'm slowing down as I'm getting closer. I'm at zero, so I'm doing neither. And then I'm going towards the x-axis, so I'm slowing down. Okay. So you'll have velocity versus time and position versus time graphs. All right, and then we move that into word problems. A particle moves along the x-axis. The function is the velocity function. What's the velocity of the velocity at time equals two? What would we do to this function to find the velocity at two? Just plug two in. Two to the fourth is 16 um, times eight times two squared, which is four, so this is 16 minus 32, which is negative 16, plus 20, which is 4. So the vo var par velocity, the particle's velocity at time equals 2 is 4 seconds. What's excel its acceleration right there? How do we find its acceleration? 
find the derivative of the velocity. So it's 4t cubed minus 16t. So then if we stick a 2 in here, it's 4 times 8 minus 16 times 2, which is 32 minus 32, which is 0. Is it speeding up? Slowing down. They actually... The velocity is four, so it's not speeding up or slowing down. It's a constant velocity right then. So it's neither. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay. Particle is moving along the x-axis. The function given, gives the particles position versus time. Maggie, you need to pay attention. Thank you. It's its position in this case. So, how do we find the velocity if we were given the position function? First derivative. So, the velocity of this equals 4t cubed minus 6t squared plus 6t. Okay? If we put in a 1, we get 4 minus 6 plus 6, which is 4. What direction is it going? Right, left, or... Not at all. It's going to the right. It's going, it's a positive four. Its position is positive, so it's moving to the right. If it, it would be going backwards, it would be going to the left. Okay. Max wrote an algorithm that searches for a specific term within a large set of terms. The following function gives the length of the search in number of steps over n terms okay so what's the instantaneous rate of change for for when he searches for 10 terms this is a position so to find the instantaneous rate of change we have to take the first derivative of this how do we take the first derivative of it well this is a coefficient times 1 over 0 0.9 times n, chain rule, times 0 0.9. What happens to the 0 0.9s? They cancel. So if we stick in a 10 here, it's 1.6 divided by 10, which is 0 0.16. So it's 1.16, so it's one of these two. And then we have to figure it out. It's steps with this many terms. So it's steps per term. 0.16 steps per term. Okay. That one's a little different. All right. A company is producing X gallons of wood stain. What's its cost? Because its overhead cost for the building or plant is like 32 hundred dollars plus this plus this plus this they've got all kinds of variables in it what's the instant rate of change when a hundred gallons are produced okay well the instantaneous rate of change is a first derivative of the cost function so it's 0 0.0012 x squared minus 0 0.002 x plus 0 0.1 and then you stick a hundred into each of these well you can't stick a hundred into there hundred times hundred squared is ten thousand so then we move ten thousand moves the decimal point over four or five places one two three four i think because of four zeros, yeah. So you get 12 minus, and this is 100, so one, two places, minus 0.2 plus 0.1 is 11.9, and then it's dollars per gallon, because it's a change, something per something. Okay? All right, that's how much it's changing. Vera study the extension of bear populations of Siberia over time. The following function gives the number of bears since Vera started tracking it. And it's this. Instant raised 
rate of change of the number of bears after two years. So it's the number of bears per year, not years per bear. Bears per year. So we got to figure this out. So we take the first derivative, which is 2190 times e to the negative 0.3t times negative 0 0.3. Exactly. So we stick 0.3 times this is 600. And 57 e to the negative negative 657 e to the negative 0 0.3 times 2. So negative 657 e to the negative 0 0.6. Somebody calculator. Negative 657 times e to the negative 0 0.6 power. It should be negative 300. Yeah, it should be negative 361, right? And it would be bears per year. Okay. So that's the types of things you'll be doing on your assignments. So I will assign them out. Yep. You might have to do some things outside of this classroom. Okay. Doesn't happen all that much in here. Yeah, it does. I'm such a liar. <laughs>